Hello, YouTubers, and welcome to the Daily Comic and Collectible, episode 632. Now today, the collectible of the day is the Kotobukiya, Marvel Comics, Art FX Line, Marvel Now Series, Deadpool Magnetic Base Statue. Now that the Avengers lineup is complete, the Japanese import Kotobukiya is expanding its Marvel Now Art FX Plus line to include other mainstream Marvel Comics characters. First up is one of the most popular comic book superheroes in the business, Wade Wilson, a.k.a. Deadpool. Formerly a member of the Weapon X program, the Merc with a Mouth is a longtime assassin for hire, an independent agent who's worked alongside just about every superhero and villain from the Avengers to X-Force, and everything in between. Now the fourth wall breaker invades your house with a fantastic new Art FX Plus statue. Created in 1991 by Fabian Nicieza and Rob Liefeld, Deadpool has never looked back and continues to appear in more and more books with his unique style and non-stop witty repartee. Not to mention his trademark costume and extensive armory. Wilson makes a stunning debut in the Art FX Plus series as he crouches in preparation for an attack, drawing one of his swords from the sheaths on his back. Deadpool naturally wears his iconic red and black costume, complete with an abundance of straps, pouches, extra ammunition, spare weapons, pointy hood with mask, and of course, his cute Deadpool logo belt buckle. In his low crouch, the assassin leans forward, with his other hand extended in front of him. You can choose between interchangeable left hands. You either give him a thumbs up or wield a second sword. Sculpted by Yunosaki Abe, the same master craftsman behind the Marvel Now Avengers series. Deadpool stands six inches tall in the one-tenth scale in his deep crouch with perfect stability on his included magnetic display base. Deadpool is of course awesome all on his own, but he also works great with teams and looks fantastic alongside the Avengers and other upcoming Marvel Art FX Plus statues, only from Kotobukiya. Now, the comic of the day is New Mutants, Volume 1, Issue Number 98, with an original cover date of February 1991. But this is the facsimile edition, released in 2024. With story by Fabian Nicieza and Rob Liefeld, art by Rob Liefeld, and cover by Rob Liefeld. This issue is titled, The Beginning of the End, Part 1. The story opens at Gideon's Colorado Estate, where Gideon prepares for the day with his morning exercise. He breaks through some of the best programs Shaw Industries has to offer, then towels off while listening to the day's schedule. Regarding the DaCosta stock inquiry, Gideon makes sure that his operative, Eve, is in place and ready to proceed with their plan. Gideon is assured by his assistant, Adam, that all will go well. Two days later, in the danger room, Cannonball infringes upon Cable's practice session with the excuse that he needs practice too. Cable uses the opportunity to see if Cannonball is able to concentrate enough in a battle situation to limit the noise of his combustion. Surprising Cannonball with an arm blast, Cable learns that Cannonball still needs some work. In fact, everyone does, but there just isn't much of an everyone anymore. In Brazil, the previous day, Eve delivers Emmanuel da Costa his coffee. It's poisoned, and he falls over dead. In the X-Mansion, Richter has lost his head. He's upset that Wolfsbane is still in Genosha, and that the New Mutants have done nothing about it. He tries to get Boom Boom to join him in a rescue, but Boom Boom just shrugs him off and he storms away. Shortly thereafter, Cable gets quite the surprise in the library. 
it seems there is a bounty on Cable's head, and a mercenary called Deadpool is there to collect. Deadpool says a man named Tolliver is none too pleased with how Cable ended things, and so Deadpool is there to eliminate Cable. After some serious fighting, Cannonball succeeds in sneaking up on Deadpool with his blast. However, the victory is short-lived when Deadpool wraps Cannonball up in a neural net. Fortunately, Boom Boom, Richter, and Sunspot enter the library as backup. Deadpool takes out Richter, but before he can test his mettle against everyone else, he himself is taken out by Domino, a mysterious lady who stands behind him, having just placed three knives in Deadpool's back. The New Mutants notice the chemistry that Cable and Domino, apparently old friends, seem to have. A little later, Cable updates Domino on the team. Several key members have left, but Cable has some plans in store for new recruits. He also mentions he mailed Deadpool back to Tolliver. That night, Richter sneaks out of the mansion. He leaves a note for Boom Boom, expressing his desire to help Wolfsbane in Genosha. A bit later, Sunspot is awakened by Gideon. Gideon informs Sunspot of his father's death by a heart attack, to the kid's shock. This story is continued in The New Mutants, issue number 99. Geek Fact! This issue is a key issue, being the first appearance of Deadpool, the first appearance of Copycat impersonating Domino, and the first appearance of Gideon, a member of the Externals. Bonus Geek Fact! The beginning of the end is a three-issue story arc, covering New Mutants, issue number 98, New Mutants, issue number 99, and New Mutants, issue number 100. The arc's driving force was Rob Liefeld, and was meant to be a new beginning for the New Mutants, who after 100 issues were no longer new. So the transformation was into a new team, led by Cable, called X-Force. They were meant to be a new X-Men of the 90s, since the original X-Men were thought dead. State of the art gaming! Chill or be chilled! Like, you ever bored to death, dude? Like, here's a chilling fact. Ultra Skater Die for Nintendo puts you and five buddies in the middle of a gnarly yet nasty snow sports spectacle where it's survival of the fastest and the raddest and the baddest. Weave your way through a jog jam shoot to the snowboard half pipe. Jump and jive in the acro aerials. Test your slope slicing skills when you do the downhill blitz. Play a frosty version of the dodgeball called the Snowball Blast. And join a rubberized race of nerves in the inner tube thrash. But beware, the winter wonderland is crawling with unnatural hazards like punk penguins, chainsaw toting rabbits, and bodacious polar bears. If you're not iced like igloo heads, or low-life Lester. Try blinding the judges with your brilliant backflips, ollies, hand plants, and daffies. Hot dog it in the competition or polish your act in practice. Just try to stay alive through the wild tubular warfare or your snowboard career will be frozen in time. Only from Ultra Games. And final geek fact. To keep this at a reasonable length, we'll pick up Deadpool's story after he leaves his teenage prostitute girlfriend Vanessa due to 34 inoperable cancerous tumors in America 
and returns to Canada. Back in Canada, he was offered hope in the form of Department K, a special weapons development branch of the Canadian government. Wilson became a test subject in Department K's branch of the joint U.S.-Canadian Superhuman Enhancement Project, the Weapon X Program. His cancer was temporarily arrested via the implantation of a healing factor derived from another Department K agent, the mutant adventurer Wolverine. Wilson was active in a covert field unit alongside the near and vulnerable Sluggo and the cyborgs Kane and Slayback. Vanessa herself was later affiliated with the team after having manifested mutant shapeshifting abilities, calling herself Copycat. During one mission, Wilson killed his teammate Slayback. Shortly thereafter, his healing factor began to destabilize, bringing his cancer back from remission and causing deformities in his flesh. As a result, he was rejected from the Weapon X program and sent to the hospice, allegedly a government facility where failed superhuman operatives were treated. However, unknown to the Canadian government, the hospice's patients served as experimental subjects for Dr. Killebrew and his sadistic assistant Ajax, with the patients placing bets in a dead pool as to how long each subject would live. Killebrew subjected Wilson to various torturous experiments for his own deranged satisfaction. In due course, Wilson formed a romantic relationship with the cosmic entity Death, who regarded him as a kindred spirit. Wilson started trying to kill himself to join Death, going so far as to start taunting Ajax by saying his real name, Francis, over and over, which earned him the respect of his fellow hospice patients. Then Ajax, angered by Wilson's taunts, lobotomized Worm, the closest thing Wilson had to a friend. At death's prompting, Wilson killed Worm to end his suffering. However, under Killebrew's rules, any patient who killed another was to be executed. Ajax subsequently tore out Wilson's heart and left him for dead. But Wilson's thirst for vengeance was so strong that he jump-started his healing factor, regenerating his heart, although not curing his scarred body. Wilson then escaped the now-empty room and attacked the guards, making his way to Ajax. Wilson shot him in the chest with two automatic rifles, leaving him for dead. Taking the name Deadpool, he escaped from the hospice with his fellow patients. Well, I'd like to thank you for joining me for another Daily Comic and Collectible, and I hope to see you again Tuesday. This is Cut Fan Comics Man. And I'll catch you on the flip. Over and out. (laughs) 